we are doing part two talking about the toxins that are in your skincare and makeup. If you did not tune in to part one last week, I highly encourage you to go listen to it. It's all right. You can listen to it out of order. You can listen to it after this one. But we are going to cover, uh, we had 12 ingredients that we want to talk about overall that you want to avoid in your skincare. We covered the first six in part one. We're covering the second six here. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome everyone to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I'm your host, Jonathan Hunsaker, joined by my co-host, Terry Ann Trevenin. Hey everyone. We are doing part two, talking about the toxins that are in your skincare and makeup. If you did not tune in to part one last week, I highly encourage you to go listen to it. It's all right, you can listen to it out of order, you can listen to it after this one. But we are gonna cover, uh, we had 12 ingredients that we wanna talk about overall that you want to avoid in your skincare. We covered the first six in part one, we're covering the second six here. I love these podcasts because I talk very minimally because you have done all of the research and education on these toxins that go into the skincare. Yeah, well, and I gotta give a shout out to Joni as well, who helps us with our podcast for helping put this together too. She's a huge advocate for clean living and clean healthcare, clean skincare. And she was actually one of the biggest reasons why I was turned on to the products I'm using in my house. I've made a big shift to moving to a lot more organic, clean, natural products. We talked about last week that, yeah, we're looking at our foods. Yeah, we're looking at our supplements and the things we're putting in our body. But did you know that the things you're putting on your body are even more harmful than the food you may be putting in your body based on the ingredients that are allowed in the United States? One fact I want to touch on really quickly that we talked about in our podcast last week is that it is much more heavily regulated in the in Europe and outside of the United States than it is in the United States as far as the ingredients they're allowed to use in their skincare and cosmetic products. We're talking things like hair dye, um, makeup, lotions, and things like that. Some of the nations have restricted or completely banned more than 1,400 chemicals from cosmetic products. By contrast, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has banned or restricted only nine chemicals for safety reasons. We talked about how EWG, and we will link their website in our show notes, is the place that you need to go. It is the one number one resource as far as regulations go for skincare and letting you know what products are clean and what products to avoid. Last week we covered, like Jonathan mentioned, the top six products to avoid in products like lotion, hair dye, soap, skincare, cosmetics, hairspray, and beyond. And we're going to tackle the next six today. So we're going to get right into it. The next ingredient you should avoid to add to our previous list that we went through is DEA compounds. DEA and DEA compounds are used to make cosmetics creamy or sudsy. These cause mild skin and eye irritation. Exposure to high doses of these chemicals has caused liver cancers and precancerous changes in skin and thyroid. DEA is also a possible hormone disruptor. I said this last week, that's a huge red flag, has shown limited evidence of carcinogen, carcinogen and depletes the body of choline needed for fetal brain development. Poison. Fragrance, apart from being used in perfumes and deodorants, they are used in nearly every type of personal care product. Of the thousands of chemicals used in fragrances, most have not been tested for toxicity alone or in combination. Over 3,000 chemicals are used to manufacture synthetic fragrances. These are often unlisted ingredients that are irritants and can trigger allergies, migraines, and asthma symptoms. The catch-all term fragrance may mask phthalates, which act as endocrine disruptors and may cause obesity and reproductive and developmental harm. In laboratory experiments, individual fragrance ingredients have been associated with cancer and neurotoxicity. Here's the catch on fragrance too. Federal law doesn't require companies to list on product labels any of the chemicals in their fragrance mixture. Recent research from the EWG and the Campaign for Safe Cosmetics found an average of 14 chemicals in 17 name brand fragrance products, none of them listed 
on the label. This is not a heavily regulated uh, market in the United States, and it's up to you to read your labels. And again, just like we've talked about natural flavors when it comes to food and that that masks a lot of the ingredients and things in your that are going into your body that you don't want from natural flavors a lot of toxic garbage fragrance is like the natural flavors for food of cosmetics and they hide a lot of things behind fragrance so be very careful when it comes to that being on your label we all want to smell good but do we want to smell good while paying a price? Well, I think people have allergic reactions to all sorts of things. And I think we relate that back to just food. And is it a food that, that's given me the allergy? But how many times have you gotten on an airplane and gotten a headache because of a smell or been around of a lot of other people that and, and their perfume was strong in the room, right? Or the cologne was strong. And you get that headache, you get these different things. I mean, I get it, um, we wanna smell nice, but at what cost? And I think that there's phenomenal alternatives. I know there's phenomenal alternatives than using the, the chemically um, enhanced versions. Well, yeah, and how many people are thinking about when they're going to buy that perfume, what's in the perfume, they're just thinking about the smell. And then they spray it on their neck, spray it on their wrist, and it all uh, gets yeah. absorbed right into your body. Breathe it in. Exactly. Peg compounds is our next ingredient to avoid, found in scrubs, body wash, makeup, toothpaste, Pegs are widely used in cosmetics as thickeners, solvents, softeners, and moisture carriers, and hence used for products requiring a cream base and also in laxatives. Those tiny plastic beads and face or lip scrubs and exfoliating washes are made from polyethylene, used because they're gentler on the skin than natural exfoliators like walnut shells. These synthetics Chemicals are frequently contaminated with 1,4-dioxane, which the U.S. government considers a probable human, probable human carcinogen, which readily penetrates the skin. They use a lot of fun words to market their, their point on things, don't they? If the government says it's probable, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Polyethylene has been noted as a skin irritant and should never be used on broken skin. Polyethylene beads and scrubs and body washes also are not filtered by our sewage systems, meaning they can collect pollutants and travel into waterways where they're consumed by fish and marine animals. I, mean, I think that's another thing that gets widely overlooked when we're talking about skin carries is these synthetics. Yes, they're being absorbed into your body. Um, through your number one organ, but then you're also washing all of this off every single day. And where does that go, right? And we're not able to clean it. We're not able to scrub it. It ends up in the rivers. It ends up all over the place. And we're talking about these things that um, affect our hormones. Well, that gets into the food supply. That gets into, you know, the fish, the lakes, all of that. I mean, I just don't think we realize the damage that we're doing uh, to our environment yet. I think we are soon finding out but I think it's just another reason if not, you know, if poisoning your body isn't enough to stop, maybe do it for the environment. There you go. True. Absolutely true. The next ingredient is petroleum. Petroleum, also known as petroleum jelly, is used in industry to lubricate machinery. So what is it doing to our bodies? Petroleum has been used for years to lock in moisture, heal chapped lips, soothe noses raw from sniffles, and protect against diaper rash, as well as to treat cuts and burns. It is an ingredient in one out of every 14 cosmetic products on any given shelf, which includes 15% of lipsticks and 40% of baby products. So what's the big deal? Scarily enough, petroleum byproduct has been found in breast tumors, strongly suggesting it is a breast cancer promoting substance. It also suffocates the skin, blocking oxygen absorption and aggravating acne. Petrolatin locks in moisture, yes, but does not allow moisture to be absorbed from the atmosphere. In short, our body gets accustomed to petrolatin's barrier and slowly becomes less and less efficient at its own detoxifying and moisturizing processes. Triclosan is used mainly in antiperspirants, deodorants, and cleansers, hand sanitizers as an antibacterial agent, also used in laundry detergent, facial tissues, and antiseptics for wounds. It's classified as a pesticide. It's so gross. It's so go gross. It was all the rage as an antibacterial product became ubiquitous in the 1990s, but it can pass through skin and can affect the body's hormone systems Again, huge red flag, especially thyroid hormones, which regulate metabolism and may disrupt normal breast development. 
Widespread use of triclosan may also contribute to bacterial resistance to antimicrobial agents. It acts like estrogen in the body and has high rates of skin allergy. The Canadian Medical Association has called for a ban on antibacterial consumer products such as those containing triclosan. Even the FDA agrees that there is no health benefit using their magic wording again, to humans who use triclosan and in 2013 ruled that manufacturers using it had to demonstrate that there were no long-term detrimental effects. We personally use naturally antibacterial and antiseptic agents like tea tree oil. You can put so many essential oils together to create an antibacterial um, basically liquid that you can spray on your hands and you can rub together versus using this really, really gross ingredient that is harming your body. The last thing is sil siloxanes. Siloxanes are a group of chemicals that are, at this, as the name suggests, derived from silicone. This is used in hair products that help your hair to dry quickly and deodorant creams that slide on easily. They're also used extensively in moisturizer, moisturizers and facial treatments to soften and smoothen and in medical implants. The risks associated with this are far too many. They are known as endocrine disruptors that interfere with human hormone function and could even possibly impair fertility. Research has shown that they not only cause uterine tumors, but can also skew the functioning of neurotransmitters in the nervous system. They resist degradation and therefore pose harm to aquatic life and wildlife. So as you can see, if you listened to our podcast last week and our podcast this week, if this hasn't been horrifying for you, <laughs> I don't know what is because these are ingredients that are in everyday products we're putting on our skin, on our hair, down the drain, um, our skin's absorbing them. It's the biggest organ on our body. Just like food is so critical in eating clean and healthy food. I would say it's even more imperative that you are using clean ingredients on your skin, in your house, every day. I, I agree hundred percent. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's wrecking havoc on our bodies, on the environment. And I, and I think that it can be very overwhelming, right? I mean, when we first, you know, went down this journey of health, you start realizing, holy crap, everything I clean my house with is bad. Holy crap, everything in my pantry is bad. Holy crap, everything in my medicine cabinet is bad. Holy crap, everything in my, you know, makeup bag is bad. Not my makeup bag, but probably yours, right, is bad. And so what do we do? You just got to take it one step at a time, right? Maybe the first thing is to eliminate your um, toxic lipstick because it's so close to your mouth, being ingested, things like that, and move to a natural lipstick. And boom, you tackled step one. Step two, let's look at a foundation or let's look at, you know, changing something else out or let's use a different lotion or a different moisturizer or let's see if you're going to exfoliate, let's, let's get one that just uses sugar, right, instead of the, the chemicals that are in there. So take it one step at a time. I, I was kind of joking at the end of the last podcast, it's time to go clean out your, your makeup bag and you're going to end up throwing everything away and you probably will. And, you know, that, that probably doesn't fit everybody's budget to go throw it all away and replace everything. But I encourage you that as you run out of your ingredient, as you run out of your product, that you just opt to buy one, the next, you know, batch, whatever it is, the next lipstick, the next lotion, whatever it is, get the healthy, get the organic one. And through time, you will transition into having just a much healthier being overall for making those shifts. Absolutely. And I'm just going to make the plug one more time. As far as products you're putting on your skin, cosmetic products, lotions, things like that, you can go to EWG, which is a powerful resource to tell you what products are clean, what are safe to use and what are not. And I can guarantee you that there are many companies out there fighting the good fight, bringing awareness to this, just like we've brought a huge amount of awareness to the organic movement when it comes to food and supplements. And we're seeing that change every single day. We have to fight for better regulations, for stronger regulations, for more requirements that go into our skincare products. They are absolutely more toxic and more harmful than even the food we're putting in our body. EWG is one of those places you can go for trusted resources and information. You should be looking at all of your skincare products, your skin products, your hair products through the lens of EWG, and you can find out what ingredients you absolutely should not 
have in your products. We covered the top 12 here in this podcast and our last podcast, but they have more information on their website for you to look at. Your dollar matters when it comes to changing this industry. The consumer dollar mattered in changing the organic industry. It still does. This industry is one of the most lucrative and biggest industries in the world. And putting your dollar towards those companies that care about the products going on your skin is what is going to change this industry. And it can be done, right? A lot of people think, well, that it's never going to change. It will change. It's happening in with our food supply. It is going to happen with supplements more and more, and it's going to happen. And I just got to say, I mean, as you've gone through this list, so many of these are endocrine disruptors and they're messing with our hormones, right? And how, you know, if you're listening to this and you suffer from any kind of hormone imbalance, um, I highly encourage you to switch to organic eating, but maybe leave the makeup off and leave all of the skincare off for a month and see what happens, right? I, I know it's, it's challenging, but we don't think about these things, right? We don't think about that. I put lotion on um, every time after I take a shower. I don't think about it. If I'm having some, some issues, that's the last thing that comes to mind is the lotion. Am I putting it on? Could that be having an issue? I instantly go to what am I eating? What supplements am I taking? Well, consider that what you're putting on your body could be contributing to your depression, could be contributing to your anxiety, could be contributing to your uh, lack of being able to go to sleep, could be um, contributing to your irritability, could contribute to all of these things. And so we just have to be more mindful. And listen, it's not like you have to walk through life on eggshells and, and, and read everything, but if you're concerned with being healthy, um, take a little bit extra time. That's what we're here for. This is why we're doing this podcast. Listen to these podcasts and then share this information. Tell your girlfriends about this. Tell your husband about this. Tell other people about these ingredients because that's the only way we're going to change it. And it's going to make a better impact on the environment and on our bodies. Absolutely. Listen, I, there's been a lot of big words here. That's why I'm glad I didn't have to read a lot of this. So go to Empowering You Organically to download the show notes. And you can read them for yourself. You can find out all of the links to the EWG. Anything else that we have sourced here, everything's going to be on the show notes. It's going to be on the transcripts. Go check it out at empoweringyouorganically.com. And as always, like us on iTunes. Give us a big thumbs up, comment. Any way that you can give us love on Spotify or any other place that you find us, do so so that we can continue creating this podcast for you. Thank you for tuning in, Terry, and thank you for all of your time, research, and delivery. Joni, our producer, thank you for all of your time and research. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we'll see you on the next show. Have a great day, everyone.